So I was recently helping out a friend of mine um, install a jack plate on his boat. We may go into what a jack plate is later. But it's basically a, it has a electric over hydraulic actuator that's powered by 12 volts DC. So he only had the jack plate. He didn't have any of the control circuitry. And um, we actually had to do a little bit of work on the actuator itself to get the motor running because the brushes froze up. But um, to control it, we had to build a DC reversing circuit. Now this is not really any fancy crazy circuit. This is not something that I'm claiming I designed or anything. This is a very common circuit. Um, it's used in just about every type of um, jack plate that's out there. And I thought it would be a really neat thing to go through the circuit and kind of describe how it works because it uses relays but it uses them in a, a almost weird sort of way um, on the on the high load side of it there's they're almost hooked up backwards it seems like but we'll go into that I thought it would just be really interesting for uh, me to introduce you to this circuit um, first I believe we'll actually have a we'll talk about relays what they are what they do um, a couple of the different kinds but mostly we're going to concentrate on what is used in this particular circuit, how this circuit works. And I just, I really like it for some reason. I think this was one of the first circuits that I've ever actually reverse engineered and had to troubleshoot and figure out how it worked. And so I've just, I've always really liked just the neat simplicity of this circuit. And a lot of people just, they don't understand how it works and it's really simple to troubleshoot and fix these things if you just have a little bit of this basic knowledge. So let's go. Okay, so we're going to start off by talking about what exactly a relay is, um, a little bit about how it works and some of the configurations they come in. Now if you're already familiar with this and you just want to know how a um, relay reversing circuit works, um, I'll try to put some sort of maybe a time somewhere around here or something like that where you can skip ahead into the video and go straight to that. So for those of you who aren't familiar with relays, we'll go through these right now. There's two large classifications of relays. Um, there's solid state, which is actually, um, if you deal with electronics, you'll probably be more familiar and actually maybe come across them a little bit more often. And then there's mechanical relays. Now, there are a lot of mechanical relays that are actually used in electronics. Like for instance, this little PCB mount relay. Um, if you opened up things like um, flat screen television power supplies and things like that, many times they will have relays in here. If you've ever opened up a scope or even you know a, a power supply, the larger power supplies, you they have relays in them. A lot of times you can actually hear them clicking. So we're going to focus on mechanical relays in this video because that's what I use in a DC reversing re relay circuit. So the basic job of a relay is to actually take a signal and it's a it's a on or off signal. There's no in between. There's no amplification or anything like that. But it's to take one on and off signal and to basically use that signal to activate a secondary set of contacts on another circuit that may be of a different voltage or it may be a much higher power that you're switching. Um, it may just be like the original design of a relay. Uh, they were actually created for long distance telegraph lines. You know, whenever they were pushing these signals across lines and they were experiencing signal drops, they would actually have to put in a relay station where essentially the Morse code signal that was being sent would reach that station and by the time it reached that station it had degraded, you know, it had become sig it had lost so much power that it wouldn't be able to actually activate the receiver on the other end so they would have relays that would 
you know, open a little coil and switch and it would actually transfer that signal in a new, stronger way. Okay, so I went ahead and opened up one of these relays and this is actually the same configuration that we'll be using in our reversing circuit. It's a single pole double throw relay with a 12 volt coil. 12 volt DC coil. You can get AC coils. In fact, one of these uh, ice cubes over here is an AC coil. But for the most part, we'll be using DC coil stuff. Okay, so the single pole double throw part of this relay, uh, it may sound familiar that that's the same configuration, same type of format that they use to describe switches. And that's exactly what it's doing. If we look on this side of the relay, there is actually a little moving part and it's got a little return spring on the back of here and this is actually just a switch that's all it is on this side you can you might be able to see that the switch is actually making contact with a little tab here and that tab corresponds directly to 80 to pin 87a which is give me a second here Which is this center one here. Now that is a normally closed contact. Um, a lot of relays you'll come across where they're simply turning something on and off will not have that normally closed contact. And that's something to watch out for because say on this relay it doesn't have a normally closed contact but it has two pins that are simply marked 87. Now both of those pins are connected. So you really have to make sure that if you need a single pole double throw switch with one normally closed contact that you don't put one of these relays with a tied together 87 pin in there because you will short something out. So we've covered the normally closed contact. And we can see that whenever we push this switch in, this is actually simulating the relay in the activated state. It actually moves it to another little contact here. And that is connected to this pin. This is our 87 pin. This is our normally open pin. So whenever we activate this coil here, all a relay does is it's basically a little electromagnet. So we activate this magnet in this coil and it pulls this contact to where it takes it off of the normally closed position and moves it to the normally open position or in the case of a single pole single throw relay it takes it from the off position and moves it to the on and you will find many many different types of relays um, but they all work basically the same this one here is a double triple pole double throw so there's three normally closed contacts and three normally open contacts and then there's your coils here and this is what you would term your common pins most of the time you will have your power coming into your common pins and then whatever you're switching will be on your two opposing pins your normally open and normally closed contacts Okay, so I brought you kind of close into this re into this relay here, and I'm sorry if I'm shaking some, but I gotta kind of freehand this one. But you can see buried in there is a little resistor, and if we look at our wiring diagram on the top of our relay cover, you'll see that resistor is actually represented right here. Um, this is our coil. This is our switch showing our normally closed contact, our normally open contact, and we'll see that that resistor is actually bridged in parallel with that coil and the reason they put that in there um, as far as I know is for pretty much inductive loading as you're activating and deactivating this coil it it kind of produces some some after effects because it is in fact an inductor come on focus Because a coil is in fact an inductor and it can give you problems.
However, for most of the things that you'll be using these automotive type relays for, it's not a big deal. Um, it also does allow, you know, a little bit of bleed through current. But honestly, nothing serious. So if you have that resistor in there, nice. If it's not in there and you're using it for just general purpose mechanical type things like we are, it doesn't matter if it has it or not. So I want to talk a little bit about this relay because it is kind of unique um, in that this is actually a latching relay. It does use a 12 volt DC coil um, just like your regular everyday one. Um, it is a much higher than normal amperage. This is a 100 amp relay. But you'll notice that there's three wires coming out of here. Um, these two copper bars here are actually going to be your, your high side, your high switching side and these are your coils now there's a there's a concentric coil in here basically that is wrapped in such a way to where this red is a common wire and then your black wire and your blue wire will actually reverse the the action of the magnet and there's a little switch in there that will connect and disconnect the contact. So once this relay is activated, that the little magnetic switch part will actually lock that switch into whatever position it's in. So it's just a little bit it's an interesting, a little bit more uncommon um, relay, especially if you're used to dealing with automotive type stuff or like your ice cubes and things like that. But um, I just wanted to point that one out and just be on the lookout if you ever see one that's kind of odd like that, that it may be a latching relay. Also, that brings up the point that these automotive style relays, even the ones with the resistors in them, they are not polarity sensitive on the coils. So it doesn't matter if you use your 85 or your 86 as your positive or your ground you can flip-flop either way. Now I'm sure there may be some sort of relays out there that have like maybe some sort of reverse polarity diode or something like that. But for the most part, if you're dealing with these automotive relays, nothing to worry about. All right, so let's talk a, a little bit about the circuit before we actually build this up. You can see down here we have a 12 volt DC battery. And up here we have a DC motor and each of our leads coming out of that motor. Now if you look closely you'll see here we have RS1, RS2. This is our relay switch for relay 1. This is our relay switch for relay 2. Here we have RC1 and RC2. This is the coil for relay 1. This is the coil for relay 2. And these coils go to a single pole double throw switch. Um, and you can use there's a bunch of different options for this. Um, you can use, you know, push buttons with a common hot or, you know, any pretty much anything you want. That's one of the great things about using relays and coils is that the coils draw minimal current, very, very little current. So you can have very small switches to activate very large circuits, you know, very high power circuits. So um, in this case, I'll be using a normal toggle switch, a on, off, on, just standard switch, you know, not a momentary one, um, just because it makes it, it's easiest for what we're going to be doing. Uh, I did, for the jack plate though, just to note, it, it, we are using a momentary switch. Um, you can see here that goes to our positive line, and I've got a 5 amp fuse in line with that, just to protect um, in case we get something shorter than the coils or in the switch, we'll blow this fuse without catching anything on fire. And you can also see here on the main line that I actually have a 30 amp fuse to cover our higher power stuff. And this CS1 here, this is control switch 1. There is only one switch in there, but I still like to give it a number. Okay, so I find the easiest way to teach this circuit is to actually start at the motor rather than starting at the battery. So if you follow our motor leads, and we're just going to pick one for right now. 
we can follow this lead down to our relay switch and you'll notice that the motor is actually connected to what is normally our common on our relay and that from the other end is where we're actually getting our positive and our negative. So we follow this and we go through our normal closed contacts and we go down and we go all the way to ground or to our negative. And if we follow our positive, it gets a, we got to kind of flip flop a little bit, so bear with me. This is really simple though. If we follow our positive, we'll notice that right now both of our positives are open. open. So all we have to do to activate this motor in whichever direction we want to do is to turn on a single relay. You never have both relays activated at once because they're both going to ground. So if we pull one off of ground and bring it high to our positive, now we have a complete motor circuit. By going from here, this switch will now go into this position, make contact, and then we can follow that all the way down to the positive of our battery. We have a complete circuit and we have a rotating motor now. So when we want to switch directions, we'll deactivate this relay and this lead will go back to ground and we can activate this one and all of a sudden this lead is the one that's high and we activate the motor but with a reverse polarity. It's very very simple and it's a really clean little circuit. That's why I think that's why I really like this circuit so much and wanted to demonstrate it. Now on another note you can if you really wanted to actually bring both of your normally closed contacts to positive instead of to your negative but I absolutely do not like to do that at all because all of a sudden that means that all the way to your motor you're bringing voltage or the, the potential for voltage so it doesn't take a whole lot of an accident for these two hot leads to be shorted to ground and all of a sudden either your motor is running wild and you don't know why or you blow your fuse. So that's just a little safety precaution is that I always have my normally closed to ground whenever I'm doing this sort of circuit. And just for the sake of completeness, um, this is actually my little bill of materials here. We have our two relays, 12 volt DC coil, uh, single pole double throw, normally closed and normally open contacts. Um, because I believe there are some relays out there that are single pole double throw, but they're an on off on. That may be considered a triple throw, but I don't I really don't think so. Um, so I just have that note in there just to make sure the contacts are correct. Um, 30 amp rated, I think the ones we'll be using will actually be 40 amp rated, but you know that's a minimum and two required. And our switch here is rated for 24 volts DC even though we're using it on a 12 volt circuit. Um, 5 amp rated momentary single pole double throw. Uh, in this case it's waterproof because it is being used on a boat. And uh, like I said before, we won't be using a momentary switch for our demonstration circuit. And here's our fuses here. We can see this is our 30 amp main fuse and inline blade like the automotive type, uh, 24 volt DC. And the one for the fuse, same thing, but five amp. So very simple little BOM. Um, that's one of the reasons that these circuits are more prominent for the use on like jack plates and things uh, because they are very basic components. There's not a PCB or anything on there. You'll, you'll see whenever we do our demonstration circuit how the wiring harnesses kind of work. But that's really all there is to it. A very simple little setup. All right, so here we have our circuit all built up. Um, the only thing that I have, actually, let me, I have the motor actually disconnected right now. Uh, just because before I use the motor, it's really loud and noisy. I figured it'd be better to actually hook up the meter 
and make sure you can see that. Yep. To uh, just show that we are actually going positive, negative, and flipping that polarity. Now, I've got this hooked up to my power supply. This is actually a new power supply from a circuit specialist. And it's a triple output, um, let me see, two 32 volt, three amp channels, and then one um, five volt, 3.3, and 2.5 volt channel. I believe that those are all three amp also. Um, so I'm going to give this a little bit of a use. I'm going to find out some likes, dislikes. Um, it is actually, um, this used to be made by Hantech, and then when Hantech stopped making them, circuit specialists actually began producing them. It's the same manufacturer and all that, and the Hantech ones kind of had a, you know, not the greatest reputation, so, um, one of the biggest complaints that they were dead on arrival, mine was not dead on arrival, thankfully. And so far, it's been good, but I'm going to use it for a little while and give a review of it then. But for now, I'm loving having a triple output power supply because it's great for things like this, like showing how relays can work off of, how they work off of two different sources. This circuit can work perfectly fine off of a single source. But for now, I have it on two sources just because... Basically, I can, and because I'm using a 24 volt motor, and um, I kind of want to vary the speed of it a little bit, so it's nice to have a single channel for the motor and a single channel for my actual coil activation. All right, so I know it looks like a tangled mess, um, and it kind of is, uh, because everything's just kind of hanging out right here, and there's alligator clips, and multimeter probes and things like that but here's our three basic components I don't have the fuses in it because I'm using a current limited power supply also didn't have fuses so but these are our two relays the single pole double throw uh, 12 volt DC coil this is our little switch here we're in the off position now, but we do have on, off, on. And let's see here. Okay, so the blue lead and the yellow lead are going to go to our motor. And they're split off right here to the multimeter probes for now. Uh, each of these white leads, the white and the red here, uh, this is our coil activation. This black goes together. This is our coil ground. Two red wires are the green and yellow. We just explained those. Lost the multimeter probe. Okay. The yellow wire is the ground side. So this is our normally closed contact. And the blue wire is our hot side. So this is the normally open contact. That's basically how simple this circuit is. So let's go ahead and grab our switch. And hopefully you'll be able to pick up the relays clicking because there's a there'll be a bunch of clicking sounds, but we need to turn our output on. was dumb. Alright, now we got the probe on the right wire. Okay, so see here we have 13.91 volts. We flick the switch the other way. We're negative 13.91 volts. So this is working to switch to polarity just fine. Okay, so now that we've seen the multimeter showing us that we are flipping polarity let's go ahead and hook up to a motor now i have the voltage turned down to 14 volts on this uh, rather than 24 because whenever you put the full 24 volts in here this motor is very loud it's actually got a um a little planetary gear set in here that just 
makes an already noisy motor noisier. Alright, so let's go ahead and rotate this motor. You see now we're rotating clockwise and we're rotating counterclockwise. And one of the good things about using two channels here is that I can go to my channel 2 and I can actually adjust the speed of this motor independently of the voltage going to my relays. There's something strange going on with my power supply. If I, I'm in my memory uh, for channel one, so my current is set to, let me switch it a little bit, to 250 milliamps. And if I'm running this circuit, it'll do it. Give it a second. Look, did you see that? The entire thing just got very angry at me. It powered entirely off for a little second and came back on right away. And then every once in a while I can kind of see a little bit of a screen like all of the LEDs right there. Uh, we'll have to play with it some more and see uh, if that problem becomes more or less persistent. Okay, let's see if we can capture these contact switching. And remember, we're only activating one relay at a time. Also on another note is that um, I really like using these bases rather than a whole bunch of spade connectors. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the spade connectors, but it just makes it that much easier because these relays will have issues. The contacts can weld shut. Um, the coils can short or open, you know, just anything that can happen to a switch or a coil can happen to a relay. And since both of them are in there, you're that much more likely for something to happen to one of them. But if one goes bad, it's just, it literally takes seconds to change it. And you're not guessing where wires go or anything like that. Um, and most of the time, you can buy your relay and the base as a set. So it's just, it's so much more worth it to just go ahead and buy the base itself. You also get nice color-coded wires. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about this uh, circuit. And once again, I'm going to say that this is one of my favorite circuits to work with for some reason. I do work with it fairly often because I do actually fix um, jack plates quite a bit. And in fact, I have one of the actuators for one on the floor right now. And I'm going to try to film a teardown of it, um, show basic problems that can happen to them. Those are really simple to fix, uh, but that will come another day. Um, also, hope you liked the first look at the PPS2320A power supply. Um, I'm going to try to figure out what's going on with that glitch. Um, honestly, don't know yet. Hopefully, it doesn't turn into some kind of weird major problem. But uh, I really hope that this becomes a really good power supply um, because it's not a very high priced one and it's. It's, it can do everything that people like me, like just regular little hobbyists, need it to do. So, as long as the uh, quality and reliability is there, and there's not some deep-seated error in it, I think that this is going to be a great power supply. But anyways, I don't want this to become too much of a commercial. Um, thanks for watching, guys, and I hope y'all learned something. Go out and build this circuit, and have fun with it.